Hello everyone, today I'll be presenting to you the uh, concept of God according to Paul Tillich, which is essentially God as ground of being. That's something Tillich says a lot, and uh, it took me a while to understand that, and it frankly took me a while to understand Tillich. Tillich was presented to me, e even as a confirmation student several years ago, as being a cynic, or being somebody that was um, kind of... A, against or critical of Christianity, and, and I found that not to be at all the case, although I would say that, that, that Tillich is highly self-critical of Christianity and, and of himself, and, and um, I think understanding Tillich's background will also help us understand Tillich's concept of God. So Tillich was born in 1886 in, in Germany. His father was a conservative minister of the Prussian Territorial Church, and um, Tillich would forever be in a sort of tension with his father and his father's religious tradition in similar ways as uh, we might expect uh, to apply to many sons and daughters in, in terms of the tension against their, their parents and their parents' generation. Um, this, this would have an impact greatly on, on Tillich's understanding in both uh, the ways he would challenge and criticize uh, the Christian faith and also appreciate the Christian faith. Uh, he grew up in a rural area and at this uh, this point early in his life developed an appreciation for nature, uh, which would also come into play in the way he, he understood um, and asserted himself as a theologian. He um, really began to acknowledge and recognize the tension that he held against his uh, father and his father's religion when he began to attend a humanistic secondary school uh, where he was introduced to the idea of free thought and of reason and, and, and more when he moved to Berlin as a teenager uh, in, in the city. Th this, uh, this tension continued, this tension, this, this love of freedom and, and free thought and free choice and this love and, and comfort in his religious tradition. This would be something that, that Tillich would continuing to be reconciling, not to justify either, but to, to find the commonality in all, which will be uh, quite a big theme for Tillich as, as a theologian. His major works are probably understood to be The Courage to Be, uh, which he wrote in 1952, Dynamics of Faith in 1957, and then really I think what many call his life's work, Systematic Theology, uh, three volumes uh, that he worked on for, for 12, year, 12 years, finishing in 1963. Uh, the, the quotes I will be using in the presentation are all from Systematic Theology, Volume 1. Um, so I had, had mentioned that, that, um, that Tillich was a, a blend of disciplines. Um, Tillich says that he, he identifies himself as, as a bridge or even as a, a boundary. Um, a boundary man was what, what he called himself, standing between the old and the new, between a heritage imbued with a sense of the sacred and the secular orientation of the new age. Uh, he asserted that his vocation was to mediate between the concerns voiced by faith and the imperatives of a questioning reasoning, uh, questioning reason, thus helping to heal the ruptures threatening to destroy Western civilization. Um, it, it, it was very important to Tillich that, that Tillich find a way to define religion and faith in a way that did not block one's access to their intellectual pursuits and abilities and their social pursuits and abilities. For Tillich, it is highly essential that one's whole self, one's whole being, be involved in all matters of their life, especially their religion which he would then define as the confrontation of questions of ultimate concern. This is a definition that's actually used in defining what religion is, not just Christianity. So, so religion is, is the pursuit uh, of even the questions of ultimate concern, the things that matter most. Um, that pursuit is often rooted in dealing with our own existence uh, and our own finitude, uh, the, the idea that, that we do not have the permanence in comparison to the, the permanence of, of God, the, the infinite nature of God. Tillich would say that when we deconstruct our finite symbols of God, 
we are able to expand not just how we understand God, but who can understand God. This was, uh, I think, one of the major causes of Tillich to be able to um, translate the religious tradition that he inherited to a tr- a culture in the new age that was not just tied to their religion, but tied to other pursuits of the mind, of the body, uh, and and even of the soul. One quote that I that I that struck me in in volume one was that God has no destiny because he has freedom. Um, to two things about that: first, that the, the God was freedom, and that's what. Tillich fell in love with as as a kid and introduced to the New Age idea of reason and and free will. But but one thing also in that quote is that that Tillich will continue to use very male-centric language. The irony and the frustration in this strikes me over and over because Tillich, as he said, is will talk a lot about the finite symbols, the the human-made symbols that we use for God and the way they place restrictions on God. And yet he often refers to God in, in the male, which I, I think many of us have, have found and identified as, as restrictive, if not destructive in some ways. So in speaking of, of God, uh, Tillich refers to God as the ground of being, um, also the, the infinite, the ultimate being uh, are phrases that, that Tillich uses. And and the idea here is that the God is bigger than the human construct, and yet all we have to to define God is the human construct. Therefore, the more we explain God, and even the more we question God, the less apt we are to understand God. Not that God should not be questioned, but that God's understanding or the understanding of God is limited by our ability to express even our questions. Uh, and, and here's Tillich's words. Tillich says, The method of arguing through a conclusion also contradicts the idea of God. Every argument derives conclusions from something that is given about something that is sought. Thomas Aquinas is correct when he rejects such an interpretation and asserts that what is first in itself may be last for our knowledge. The arguments for the existence of God Neither are arguments, nor are they proof of the existence of God. They are expressions of the question of God, which is applied in human finitude. The question is their truth. Every answer they give is untrue. Tillich then goes on to talk about symbols. Since God is the ground of being, he is the ground of the structure of being. He is not subject to this structure. This structure is grounded in him. He is this structure, and it is impossible to speak about him except in terms of this structure. God must be approached cognitively through the structural of being itself. Theologians must make explicit what is implicit in religious thought and expression, and in order to do this, they must begin with the most abstract and completely unsymbolic statement which is possible, namely, that God is being itself, or the absolute. However, after this has been said, nothing else can be said about God as God, which is not symbolic. Much of Tillich's writing, frankly, strikes me as almost circular. You know, what is God? Well, the more we say God is, the less we understand God. However, it's important, I think, to invoke into this conversation Tillich's past by which uh, God was so well-defined for him and others that as it confronted this new uh, era, um, it became something that was unappealing and irrelevant to to the times. Tillich actually became a chaplain in World War I in Germany, uh, shortly before he moved to the United States. And in this, he was very distraught by the the violence of the war and it was at that point that Tillich had decided that that humankind must be at the end of an era and for Christianity to continue Christianity must by necessity be entering in a new era and for Tillich this new era meant the expansion of the ways that we define God and the ways that we um even understood and and held expectations from, with, or within God. So 
this uh, admittedly is very uh, f functional and, and academic, not necessarily accessible to um, other conversations that I feel we might need to have about uh, what it means to coexist in, in community um, and, 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 and such. In fact, the, the way that, that Tillich defines sin in the larger concept is separation from God, which he then says is inevitable, but because it's inevitable is also a shared experience. Although Tillich focuses on the individual nature of that shared experience. So um, the, the, the way Tillich understands it is very um, apologetic on the individual's behalf, although there's certain room uh, for interpretation um, for, for community responsibilities, particularly when Tillich talks about God as love. Tillich says, through the separation within himself, God loves himself, and through separation from himself and creaturely freedom, God fulfills his love of himself primarily because he loves that which is estranged from himself. This makes it possible also to apply the term agape to the love wherein man loves himself, that is, himself as the eternal image in the divine life. Um, the, the 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 both the 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 beneficial and, and and the challenging lie in this quote for me the the idea that, that God loves humankind um, as God loves God's self very apparent but but also and again with such male centric language it seems so limiting particularly uh, in line with the point that that Tillich makes uh, several times over uh, in terms of justice Tillich has this to say justice is that side of love which affirms the independent right of object and subject within the love relation. Love does not destroy the freedom of the beloved and does not violate the structures of the beloved's individual and social existence. A conflict can be imagined only in relation to the creature who violates the structure of justice and so violates love itself. Tillich is, is big on um, humankind's responsibility to love ourselves as God would love. He acknowledges that there are other types of self-love that include lust and romance and, and other things, but, but, but says something to the effect that, that while these aren't inherently evil types of love, they become evil and sinful the more they become separate from the way God loves God's self. But again, while we will hopefully interpret this as the way we must love our neighbor as God loves God's self, uh, for, for Tillich, it remains a, kind of a, a highly um, uh, personalized, individualized uh, responsibility. I think particularly um, in defense of what had become for Tillich in his conservative up upbringing, a God that was not necessarily loving, but demeaning and, and high expecting. So uh, all that being said, here's a conversation uh, question for us, or a question for our conversation. Where have you seen God language, the way God is defined, labeled, named, described, be cumbersome, barricading, damaging, or narrowing? And in line with the conversation of Tillich and, and and, and the symbols and the infinite ways in which God exists, but the finite ways in which we um, may have the resources to describe or understand uh, God's existence. Where have you seen God language be inviting, hopeful, connective, and restorative? Thank you for this opportunity to be in conversation with you all.